HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCAM News Live. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. HCAM News is live every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. until 7 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, we have scenes from the Lauren Anderson softball field dedication ceremony. HCAM hosted a debate for the school committee race. And we have some upcoming happenings in town to tell you all about. But first, Educate Hopkinton hosted their annual Know Your Vote program in preparation for Saturday's annual town meeting. Educate Hopkinton hosted their annual Know Your Vote program in preparation for the annual town meeting on Saturday, May 8th. We'll be voting on a town budget of just under $99 million for fiscal year 2022. This represents a 2.86% tax impact on residents and businesses, which equals an increase of $320 in taxes next year for the average home worth just over $650,000. The total school budget is just under 54 million, which represents a 5.8% increase from 20, FY21. The schools are projecting 74 new students to enter the system this fall. There are two bigger ticket items for the schools that we will be voting on. Article 17 is a proposal for just over $3.5 million to add four classrooms to Marathon School. And Article 19 is a request for $3 million to replace a large, large areas of the roofs on Hopkins School and the Middle School. Both of these items are debt exclusions, which in really simple terms, basic terms means if we approve them, they will temporarily increase our taxes to fund these specific projects and will require a second vote at the polls on May 22nd. Um, there are two articles relating to installing commercial solar farms in Hopkinton. These have generated a lot of discussion and interest over the past couple of years. We're going to be talking to Gary Trendle, chair of the planning board about both. And that just provides a very high level overview of some of the key articles and where there are many more that we're gonna get into. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to my fellow EHOP board member, Christy Willitson, to facilitate the Q&A. Town moderator, Tom Garabedian, shared some of the details about the upcoming town meeting. But uh, as Nanda mentioned, town meeting begins at 9 a.m. this coming Saturday. Uh, you know, we, it, it is something that we will conduct rain or shine. And unless the conditions are dangerous, we do intend to conduct the meeting starting, starting at 9 o'clock on Saturday. I would encourage uh, people to arrive at the high school or the middle school parking lot and high school parking lots uh, early enough to allow uh, the voters to get down to the football field where the tent will be set up and where they'll have an opportunity to sign in uh, as as they routinely do as people routinely do for town meeting uh, and take your seats uh, within the tent uh, chairs will be set up in a socially distant manner we do request that people wear masks even while they're seated under the tent even though it's outside uh, as Nanda mentioned again, there are two meetings that are going to be conducted. At this point, we anticipate opening the annual town meeting first and immediately adjourning it and then opening the special town meeting so that we conduct so that we can conduct the two uh, special town meeting articles first. Uh, we'll conclude that business and then we'll move back, uh, reopen the, the annual town meeting and march through the 44 articles. Uh, it is our hope and my expectation that we will complete the um, agenda for both of the meetings on Saturday by Saturday afternoon. 
And in that light, uh, I'm going to implore people tonight and also at the meeting uh, not to monopolize the conversation, to, to be quick and efficient with respect to their questions, and uh, to enable us to conduct, as we did last year outside, uh, a very thoughtful and efficient meeting. Okay, thank you for that, Tom. One follow-up question. Um, can you get into the reasoning why there's a special town meeting the same day as the annual town meeting? Uh, I'll venture uh, my understanding, which is that the special town meeting articles came after the annual town meeting warrant was closed. And so in order to, to be able to hear it on the same, uh, at the same time, it had to be done within the framework of a special town meeting. The panelists then answered questions from the community. First question is, does the FY22 budget provide level services from FY21? Thank you for that question. Um, so the short answer is yes, uh, it, does, it does provide for level funding. And actually uh, there are some specific targeted increases uh, the largest new uh, start is the increase is the addition of um, 18.5 new positions at the Hopkinton Public Schools at a budgeted cost of uh, 959,265 dollars. Uh, the budget also includes the addition of a single patrol officer at, for the uh, Hopkinton Police Department uh, to be funded in the first year by a host community agreement. Uh, the addition of less than one full-time equivalent employee to the Youth and Family Services Department, and the funding of a Senior Services Department driver who is fully paid by, uh, by a grant that's, that's no longer available. And a community member emailed in with the questions related to this. How does the town plan to deal with the drainage problem that is occurring in the neighborhood behind Marathon School and EMC Park? How would this drainage problem be rectified if planning to put additional schools along that same strip of land? And will the town figure out a way to handle the existing problem? Another very good question. Um, as, as I was thinking about the answer to the question, I realized perhaps we should in, have entitled the article EMC Park Drainage and Abutting Properties Remediation. Here's why. Uh, the article um, requested is being requested to address an existing drainage runoff issue from the EMC Park property impacting private residences on Hazel Road. The proposed remediation in this request is not related to any school property. The proposed preliminary modifications uh, including a final design to come later will consist of eliminating safest runoff onto the private residences, including installation of additional drainage features within EMC Park, restoration of the existing detention basins in the EMC Park, and installation of new drainage infrastructure, including underground pipe and manholes from the restored detention basins to the wet area the surface runoff is currently discharging into, uh, including the areas on the residences on Hazel Road. So again, uh, it's a drainage remediation project that will address the impact of the drainage coming from EM Simpark impacting the abutting properties. You can see the entire Know Your Vote broadcast on our website, hcam.tv, as well as our YouTube page. The Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting will take place at the field of David M. Hughes Stadium on Saturday, May 8th. This past Tuesday night, HCAM hosted a debate for the lone contested race in this year's town election, the school committee. Here's a look. What is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Amanda, you can answer first. Thank you, uh, Tom, and thank you to HCAM for hosting this debate. Um, so the most effective 
yeah, the most important qualification I would say would be um, just being able to process a wide breadth of information, um, breadth and depth of information across many, many topics um, and to digest that information quickly and to pull out um, the relevant, uh, you know, sort of actionable um, points so that you can make decisions and, and guide the district forward. Um, you can imagine in a job that deals uh, sort of overseas a $54 million budget covering facilities and hiring and curriculum and special ed and mental health. Um, there's a breadth of topics that you really need to become conversant on quickly. So um, I think it's important to be able to commit and do the work. I think um, that is something that I am actually, I like to do. I like to process information. Um, I, I like to do that analysis and I like to figure out um, sort of with a level head uh, where to go uh, with that information to, to help lead the district. All right, excellent. Uh, Meg, same question. What is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Let me now answer, Meg. Thank you, Tom. Um, one quality that I think is absolutely crucial is the ability to listen and then to integrate into your own thinking, opposing points of view. Um, you know, the, the five of us have very strong personalities on the school committee, and we have to talk a lot about a lot of very sensitive topics and very important topics. Um, we don't always agree with each other, but I have learned so much from listening closely, especially to points of view that I don't agree with. Um, as you know, in the past year, we have struggled a lot with trying to decide what to do in the face of the pandemic. Um, a particularly trying experience, I think, for all of us was being on the reopening full-time committee and listening to people who were so eager to get their kids back into school and people who were really fearful of that prospect too. And I think that we all have strong emotions. Um, whether we illustrate that or not, we have them. And I think part of listening well is learning not to react to how you're feeling in that moment, but to be able to acknowledge the feeling in yourself, but still try to synthesize the information. And as Amanda said, to remain level-headed. A lot of this is about listening, waiting, and then trying to do the right thing through the use of reason. All right, terrific. And Jared, uh, what is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Excellent. Thank you, Tom, for the question. So, you know, similar to Amanda, I think the most important quality is kind of the ability to, you know, intake, you know, understand and ultimately synthesize information. The one point I'd add to that is ultimately being comfortable making a decision and moving forward. You know, I think that there's a lot of information out there, you know, certainly now, whether it's, you know, sourced in so many different places, but I think it's so important that not only just listening, not only gathering all of that data, but ultimately being able to move forward decisively. Uh, and I think, you know, as we, you know, as we look about, look what's most important, I think that, you know, that kind of paralysis, just sitting, waiting, I, I think it, you know, it, it's difficult, you know, it's difficult for the town, it's difficult for the students. Uh, and ultimately, I think it's difficult for progress and moving forward. You know, I, you know, career wise, I, I work uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, um, which, you know, is, is an area that, you know, is, is filled, it's, you know, we literally live and die by data. Uh, so it's, it's so important that, you know, your ability, your able to make a decision uh, with something like 60, 80% of the data, make a decision, move on, continue to learn more. You know, if you learn that last 10 to 10 to 20%, you learn a little bit more. It's okay to change direction. It's okay to, you know, correct, change course a little bit, but ultimately to make a decision and move forward. We are going to take a quick time out, but a whole lot more ahead. You're watching HCAM News. Stay tuned.
HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as Mapfree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. You know, Dick and Rick Hoyt in the town of Hopkinton had a, a real and heartfelt connection uh, that started years and years ago and it's uh, persisted right to this this very moment um, and to have the sculpture uh, in front of center school which honors team Hoyt uh, is is going to be even more memorable now uh, with the passing of Dick to me besides the athletic accomplishments of Dick Hoyt the most powerful example that they set forth is the, the strong and, and, and bonding relationship between our father and son. That's really what unconditional love is all about. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Lauren Anderson Field Project is completed and they recently hosted a dedication ceremony. Here's a look. Our village included townspeople, community organizations, businesses, Lauren's family, friends, teammates, classmates, and the Hopkinton School District Administration, and the High Hopkinton High School Athletics and Facilities staff. I thank you all so very, very much. It couldn't have been done without you. Our project goal was to upgrade Lawrence Field to the standard of all other fields at Hopkinton High. I called Amy and Lauren's sister, and she offered to come with me, so she and Mike and I went over to Kerrigan Park on that evening. I talked about fundraising, and Amy talked about what it was like to be Lauren's sister. It was amazing. She talked about Christmas morning in the Anderson household. She talked about the fact that she was the big sis, and Lauren was the little sis, but it should have been the other way around, that she learned so much from her sister and loved her so much. I think she touched the players as they were listening to her because when they went on the field to get ready to play the game, we heard the sound in the background and we couldn't make out what they were saying. And so we turned around and got louder and louder and louder and they were chanting. Sparkle, 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 sparkle. It was awesome. Very, a very special moment in the project. I think maybe a sign. On the agreed date, Kathy arrived punctually. The business manager and I initially were somewhat unaware of the meeting's purpose. And so we chatted pleasantly for a little bit with Kathy. And then Kathy, ever prepared, slid a folder across the table. It contained Lauren's story, Lauren's beautiful smile, and Kathy's dream of remembering Lauren Sparkle and restoring Field 6 in Lauren's honor. In my mind, and I'm sure in the mind of the Director of Finance, was another item in that folder, a really big price tag. Surely, Kathy Kilduff's goal was what some might have understatedly called ambitious. And honestly, I thought to myself, and I was keeping the words in the bubble above my head, how is she ever going to raise that money? <laughs> Kathy confidently described launching social media campaigns and using several media outlets, our friends at HCAM and the Hopkinton Independent, reaching out to family, friends, Lauren's former classmates, businesses, to spread the word about the Lauren Anderson rededication event and fundraiser. And still I thought, she's never gonna do it. Well, look around you this morning. You see two new dugouts, a restored scoreboard, all new fencing, cleared brush, and a superintendent with egg on her face. <laughs> I'd like to use my few minutes today to do a few things. First, I want to be sure to recognize our fearless leader, Kathy, Ka Kathy Kilda. Yeah. Kathy 
gives credit very, very freely, and she takes none for herself. But without Kathy, we would not be celebrating this success today. Thank you, Kathy, so very much for leading this team. Second, I want to surround Lauren's entire family with our collection of love and admiration. I hope that seeing this outpouring for Lauren proves that she will never be forgotten. To Lauren's mom, Ricky, I want to make sure that you know this. You made a difference. Your capacity, especially as you faced such great sadness, to make others feel cared and loved had an immeasurable impact on me and on countless others. I love you. For their generous donations of time, talent, and treasure, I would like to thank the 26.2 Foundation, American Climbers Tree Service, Hopkinton High School Boosters Club, Hopkinton Parks and Rec, Hopkinton Little League, and Western Nurseries. Kathy Kilduff led the two-year effort to restore this field in memory of Lauren. Kathy recruited and managed a team of volunteers who oversaw the fundraising and kept track of the countless other details to make this happy. Marie Eldred developed and drove all communications and media, all done from South Carolina to boot. Um, and he can't be here today because he's on a long weekend with his family. But Ryan Fowler negotiated each purchase, managed the schedule, and worked tire tirelessly with the Hopkinton High School facilities team to install the upgrade. I think it looks great. Unbelievable. <laughs> And I know I'm not saying thank you to everybody, but thank you to everybody. If I've forgotten anything, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lauren loved playing softball. She loved the camaraderie, the teamwork, learning to win and lose graciously, accepting disappointment, dedication to the field, dedication to the game, and goal setting. She would be so pleased to see this beautiful, newly renovated softball field. And although this is to honor Lauren, I hope all the female athletes here and in the future of Hopkinton High School will enjoy playing softball as much as she did. Thank you for coming today. It is wonderful to know that Lauren is still remembered after all these years. And this field upgrade proves that she will always remember, that we will always remember her sparkle. Sparkle on three, one, two, three, sparkle! You can see the full Lauren Anderson field dedication ceremony at our YouTube page, as well as our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot of games are happening during this spring season. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers spring schedule. And of course, some games could be moved around due to some incoming weather, but we're hoping that won't be the case. But as of right now, Monday, May 10th at 3.45 p.m., you can catch Hiller's Girls Lacrosse versus Westwood. 
And we'll also have Hiller's baseball and softball versus Medfield. All three games start at 3.45 p.m. On Tuesday, May 11th at 3.45 p.m., we'll have Hiller's boys and girls track versus Ashland. Then on Wednesday, May 12th at 4 p.m., Hiller's boys lacrosse takes on Medfield. Then on Friday, May 14th at 4 p.m., Hiller's girls lacrosse takes on Norwood. Some upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts include on May 21st, Dystopia, the Hunger Maze game of Divergent Death, an outdoor youth comedy. You can check out all the upcoming events at the HCA at their website, www.hopartcenter.org. Our picture of the week, classmate and friend of Lauren Anderson, Karen Leahy Lanigro, speaks at the Lauren Anderson softball field rededication ceremony. Upcoming government meetings coming up on HCAM TV. Of course, Saturday, May 8th at 9 a.m. We'll have the annual town meeting. Then on Tuesday, May 11th at 7 p.m., we'll have the Conservation Commission. You can check out the full list of town government meetings at the town website, hopkintonma.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry, next Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we'll be back. As always, thanks for tuning in. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.